All right, so our rational indices is just really making use and remembering the relationship here um, that the nth root, so the square root is one that we use a lot of, isn't it? So the square root, nope, I don't like that pen. So the square root of two is two to the half. The cube root of four is four to the one third. And in fact, so the nth root, the nth root of a is a to the one on n. So really that's, that's that property that we've got to try to retain from our earlier math years. Um, otherwise, if we already have an, an index that is a fraction, we'll, we just apply all the same rules, except we just happen to be multiplying with a fraction or a, a negative number or whatever it happens to be. So if we look at the first couple of examples here, nine to the power of minus a half, or let's write nine as its prime decomposition. So three squared to the power of minus a half, we multiply the powers together, we get one third, okay? Um, 16 to the five on two, well, let's change 16 to its base form. So two to the power of four. So two to the four to the power of five on two. Again, we multiply the powers. So we end up with 20 on two, which is two to the 10. Same thing, 64 is two to the power of six. Okay, and again, six times negative two thirds is going to be negative 12 on three, which is two to the negative four, which we write as a positive index as one over two to the four. Continuing to work through, um, again, let's just treat everything in its decompos decomposed form, I guess. Uh, 45 is nine five, so that's three squared times five. We've got a three squared and we've got five times three for 15. Again, we just distribute our fractions. So the only difference is you've got to be careful with your fractions. Two times one third is two thirds. Um, five times, or well, one times a third is a third. Two by three quarters is six on four, which is three on two. Uh, and three on two gets distributed through all the others. So once we group all the like terms together, we've just got to be careful with our fractions. So I think what works nicely is just getting a common denominator there everywhere. So two on three, three on two, three on two, let's make it on six. So it's the equivalent of four on six, nine on six, nine on six. So we get three to the power of negative seven on three and five to the negative seven on six, which we can write in positive index form. All right. Um, I'll dig up some screenshots here. I thought I would have some of these. Oh, here it is up here. Looks like that, 45 to the one third. Yeah, so it's obviously written slightly different. Okay. Um, again, you can have a play around to get into the appropriate form. So 675, that's um, five to the power of a lot. 25 25s, what's that? 625, I think. So it'll be. Um, anyway, you can guys can have a play with it. Uh, 32 to the little quarter. Again, let's turn everything into its base form. 32 is 2 to the 5. 12 is 4 times 3. 12, 4 times 3. And 16 is 2 to the 4. So multiply those fractions through everywhere. Okay, and it's just a case of being careful. Um, and once you've done that, we get all the base terms together. So again, I've turned this into a denominator of 12. So we end up with a 15 plus 8 on 12 because our 1 and negative 1 cancelled. Power of, uh, denominator of 6. So 3 plus 2 on 6. So we get 2 to the 23 on 12, 3 to the 5, 6. So how does that compare? So there's my 3 to the 5, 6. Uh, 2, 23 on 12 is 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 11 twelfths. And so there's my 2 to the 1, and there's the 2 to the 11 twelfths there. So that one's a bit more, e bit easier to explain in terms of the, the CAS dump. So a couple of ways you can really contemplate this one here and depending on how far you want to take it it's the same base number really isn't it x squared minus one the square root of x squared minus one so we could just go straight away with 
um, adding the powers of x squared minus 1. So 1 plus a half is x squared minus 1 to the 3 or 2, which takes us straight down to there. Or if you want to expand your terms, if you don't really pick up on that, expand and group terms together, we sort of, we wander back to the same thing. So there's, there's sometimes multiple ways that we can approach them. All right. So just remember that whether it's a fraction or whether it's a, a negative number, we apply the same laws. It's the same law, you've just got to be careful with the way in which you manipulate your fractions.